Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So in this video here we will be smashing some clear down on this Mercedes-Benz X250D bonnet. So yeah, I don't know if you guys get these in the rest of the world, but yeah, they're like brand new Mercedes Ute. So for you in America who are saying what is a Ute, we call a Ute what you guys call a pickup. And we call a bonnet what you guys call a hood. So yeah, just clear that up in case you're sitting there wondering what is a bonnet what's this guy talking about what's a ute <laughs> so all of that aside i've already done a bit of a repair so it was a decent sized uh, chip taken out of this bonnet so being that it's a brand new car we obviously had to fix it and fix it properly so yeah i just feathered it out i've got some 320 grit on the orbital sander and then put some UV primer onto it. And from memory, I actually just uh, threw this bonnet into the sun because the sun just so happened to be shining into the workshop that morning. So yeah, I just whacked that UV primer, which I'm spraying my base coat over now. I just whacked that into the sun and uh, that was dry within yeah, a couple of minutes. Uh, and there was another tiny little chip back up here. So I just decided to fix that as well. Um, it wasn't really related and I'm sure they didn't even see it uh, when the job was quoted, but yeah, I don't like going and painting over damage. Uh, whenever it's possible, I will fix it. Whenever it's, you know, reasonably uh, possible, it's not gonna go and break the bank and, you know, I'm not gonna go and spray the next panel for free. So if I'm gonna lose out on a blend that I did need, uh, obviously depending on the color, this is actually a brand new color for Mercedes. Now, um, I know because, well, it's a new color in Australia at the very least. It's called Cabara Black, so Cabara Schwartz. Schwartz is the German name for black and um, yeah I know because you used to have Cosmos Schwartz and then you used to have Obsidian Schwartz so originally when I saw this I'm like oh yeah it must be one of those two um, but then when I used the Spectra it actually came up with a different um, color so that's why I spectro it I found that the Spectro came up with a really good color match so I actually didn't have to match it myself the Spectro did shade the color um, and then I actually saved that Spectro reading in as a personal formula. I then did a color card. So now whenever this color comes in in the future, I will have that color card for reference. I'll be able to go and make sure that that color card is the same as the next Mercedes that comes in that is this color. And then I'll be able to say either mix and paint or at least choose that variant um, to mix up and then uh, re-spray it out. Just to double check. Sometimes I do like to just double check colors. I know some people just trust their color cards, but you can actually have um, batch variants in tinters, you know, like this this tinter from this batch, although it's meant to be like deep red, for instance, um, it might be a slightly lighter version of it because of, you know, inconsistencies in batches. So yeah, I know it's only like, yeah, a small chance of it happening and it might only be a small difference, but you know, when you're working on cars that are worth, I don't know, this car here, for example, around $50,000, $55,000, I think, for the base model of these X250Ds. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's worth putting. <laughs> you're getting paid to do the job. You may as well do it properly. That's the way I say it anyway. So, yeah, clear coat here I'm using is the uh, Standox Standard Clear, which is a 4 to 1 clear. It's a hybrid clear, so they tell me, uh, and it uses the VOC uh, hardener in it. As I said, four to one ratio, no reducer. If you do use this clear, um, you're not meant to put any reducer in it. So don't even think about it. You're just gonna make it too thin. You'll lose all the body and it won't last. And the gun I'm using is my trusty old ProLite with the TE20 and 1.3 mil fluid tip on it. So yeah, look, all the time these days, we're always in a hurry. The car was actually already sold. I think in this instance, this car had been sold and the dealership, yeah, we do paint cars to dealerships. Um, the dealership wanted this car back as soon as possible, so I did actually make them wait for an extra day. However, I did decide to use the fast hardener just so that it was um, going to cure that little bit faster. Even though I did leave it overnight to cure, I still wanted it to um, not be too fresh when I went to polish it. So yeah, I painted this on the Tuesday, um, and then I actually sprayed another C200 Mercedes after this for the same dealership and I actually gave this a double bake so when I painted that C200 I um, threw this bonnet up in the, the other end of the spray burst so I wasn't going to get any overspray on it um, and then yeah just gave it that little bit extra of a bake just to 
Yeah, as I say, like if, if you um try to polish clear that is too fresh, it can be prone to looking good, and then once it continues to cure, you, your um, sanding scratches will actually come back from where you've denibbed it. Um, so yeah, look, at the end of the day, like I was never expecting there to be no dust in this bonnet. Um, I didn't expect to have so many silicon holes in it though, and in hindsight, I should have known better, um, because it is a uns unsold, well, just sold car, um, hasn't even left the dealership yet. It obviously just picked the scratch up somewhere. What the dealerships do tend to do is cover the entire cars in a bath of silicon. So, silicon is not good for paint. It is like a painter's worst nightmare. So what I really should have done was actually get the water-based degreaser, um, the orange stuff, like there's loads of different brands, I'm sure there's different colors too, but we've got this orange stuff, um, and you can just spray that over inside and outside of um, a panel that you're painting, and it would just cut all that silicon off. Um, however, this job here, I just decided to double prep sole it. It didn't feel really silicony. That's probably why I actually didn't um, give it that extra degreaser. Because um, yeah, like some cars, you you just touch it and your hand just slips off. I'm not even joking. Like I've, I've got this Spectro, which is the little camera that we use to take photos of the color, and it literally s slips. I mean, it's insane. It just feels crazy. It's like boing boing. The Spectro is like slipping off the panel because there is so much leaking on there. But you know, I didn't get that feeling. I didn't think it was going to be so bad. But unfortunately, I did get a few silicon holes opening up in this bonnet. So yeah, the best way to fix that is what I did is I actually left this job for like half an hour or might have even been 45 minutes before I hit bake. The reason for that is because we get stuff falling from the roof. It also actually helps retain a nice gloss level. We like to help it sort of gas out before you hit bake. If you hit bake too soon. Um, you can actually sort of like shock it and it'll just yeah lose a bit of its gloss so yeah, as I said I left it for half an hour to 40 minutes um, and then dabbed those little wax holes in or silicon holes whatever you want to call them um, yeah it's just an unfortunate part of this trade sometimes it's um, you can try and blame it on the painter but at the end of the day just get the job done that's like sometimes a boss will come down oh you didn't do this and I'm like yeah well like I haven't done it you know it's like we can't change time, we can't go back, I can't go back in time and do it, let's just fix it and let's get, move on with life, you know what I mean, like, no use in stressing too much about it, you know, that's what I'm saying, like, you can point the finger at me, say, oh, it's your fault with those silicon spots, well, mate, you just got to learn from it and move on, you know what I mean, like, yeah, next time I get a car like this in, I will probably try to remember to degrease it, and, hey, if you can learn something from my mistakes, well, that's even better, but yeah, you probably noticed that I, I did dab some of those spots in, and we were able to polish this panel up like absolute glass i came in early the following morning following morning from painting it and i tell you what i was just on cloud nine i was like jumping in this car and then jumping in that next car which was as i said the c200 i love my mercedes-benz and i can really take a bit more pride in a car like this like in in the the quality of workmanship that you do on a car like this and when it's just I don't know, to me, it just came up really good. I was really, really happy with um, the way that this bonnet came up. I'm sure there's going to be some detailers out there saying, you're wiping that polish off in the wrong way. You've got to get your right leg and put it over your left ear and stand and, and hop around while you're wiping the panel and you're not allowed to wipe it in circles. <laughs> now, detailers crack me up. But you know what? I think I'm actually going to upload a video of me polishing this bonnet i do have the footage there i've just got to get around to editing and narrating it up so let us know if you would like to see the polishing stage and see my way of re uh, achieving this result that you see here to me it looks totally awesome i reckon that is a brilliant gloss there's no swirl marks in it and yeah very few if any imperfections in it so as i say i was in a great mood after finishing this job hope you guys did enjoy this video listening to me rant on about spray painting and all of that kind of stuff until next time get out there and paint some shit coming out goodbye <laughs>